Shalom. My name is Kazakiel Ben Yisrael, and welcome, welcome to Voices of Our Fathers. Uh, tonight's topic is part two of principles in Hebraic thought in the New Testament. And for the most part, we're, we're talking about the Hebraic thought and the different principles that have been misconstrued about the Bible, the book that we call the Bible. And as Elder uh, just got through speaking on, uh, the Bible is basically Hebraic thought. And I think one of our main problems is that we're trying to take a Western thought okay. or Western ideology and make it conform to a Hebrew thought as opposed to taking the, 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 the Western and setting it aside and learning the Hebraic thought because basically we are reading a translation okay. but we forget that we read a translation <laughs> and we think that we are reading this, this thing in English and that we have it down pat to where there's no room for improvement. But once you understand that, you haven't really even scratched the surface if you're dealing with it in just strictly English. Okay. Because with English comes the ideology. Uh, the Greek ideology comes out in English because English comes from the Greek language. Yes, it does. Uh, so in order for you to understand what I'm saying is, take for instance, we were just talking about this. If you have um, the Apostle Paul and he wrote epistles to Gentiles and if you are a people that has no uh, known history of where you're from, uh, you can't understand who you descended from, uh, uh, all that was stripped away from you. Uh, mm -hmm. How can you determine that because one people say that they're Gentile, <laughs> how can you automatically just determine that you're a Gentile? Don't you understand? And the people I'm just going to come out and say, the people I'm referring to are who they call African American. You don't know who you are unless somebody comes along and helps bring you into the knowledge of who you are because that was stripped from us yeah. by the Most High. Right. According to what's written, the only people that I can see close to even looking like uh, the children of Israel are who you call African American. So, one of our biggest problems as so-called African-Americans is we emulate everybody but who we're supposed to. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no secret that the, the so-called African-American came here uh, as chattel or as, in bondage. So, I mean, for the most, for the most part, all you got to do is think. If you were stripped of everything that you knew regarding language or culture, you had to emulate somebody. And it was your slave master. Very good. So therefore, if he was a Christian, you became a Christian. Mm -hmm. So that's how we can get caught into this whole lie about being a Gentile. Right. Because who, call, who are called African-American, you are not a Gentile. No. I mean, in no stretch of the imagination could you be a Gentile because the way you came here dictates who you are. Right. So I'm going to leave that and get it to somebody else. Let's see, can anybody else go somewhere with that? Um, if you look at Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Mm -hmm. 
Revelation and Romney 20 and 8. Very good book. Good chapter. And we're going to start at verse 36. Okay. It says, Yahweh will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known, and there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone. Let me stop right there. Now, let's set this up. When this was given, the children of Israel were where? They were in the, they were in the wilderness. Only. Correct. Yep. And the only king they had then was who? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Notice what it said. It says, Yahweh will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. Mm -hmm. And there you will serve other gods, mm -hmm. wood and stone. Now, that's quite interesting. But let's continue to read verse 37. Mm -hmm. It says, and you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where Yahweh will drive you. Let's stop right there. Kazakiel says something uh -huh. very interesting. Uh -huh. He said, those of us who are called African American. Right. But. Do you know what a byword is? It's a good question. A byword is anything or any word that's attached to something, no matter what it is. Okay. It said you will become a byword. Mm -hmm. Black, mm -hmm. Negro, mm -hmm. right. African American, mm -hmm. colored, mm -hmm. right. spear chucker. Or smoking. Whatever, mm -hmm. that is a byword. Nigga. That's another <laughs> byword. <laughs> yeah. And it says you shall become an astonishment. Yep. Uh -huh. Huh? An astonishment. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That mean, what does that mean? That simply means that, for the most part, if people knew that you were the people of Yah, and he took you down so low. so low. I mean, all the way down, as much talent that he's given you. Uh -huh. And you were uh, up so high, you would astonish everybody that's witnessed it. That's right. Yep. It's a, you, you are what they call an enigma. Yep. They look at you, what they say, if you ever wanted to know the idea of a slave, all you have to do is look at you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? Look at you in amazement. That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. But now, this is very interesting here. Yeah. It said the king whom you set over yourself. Turn to First Samuel. Let's set this up. Okay. Now remember, the children of Israel were in the wilderness at the time this was given. Right. The only king they had was the father. They about to go into the land. Right. Set them straight. And it was only after a length of time mm -hmm. before this happened. Now, he said, mm -hmm. the king that you set over your club. Mm -hmm. First Samuel, mm -hmm. and we're going to start at chapter 8. Uh, can I, can I go just, right ahead? I, I wanna. I would like to set this up a little bit okay. for the viewing audience because they they understand, they can hear what we're reading here, mm -hmm. but they don't. Oh, I, I don't think that everyone will quite understand exactly what we're setting up here. Okay. What Elder okay. is setting up here is, is we're reading in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. At this time, all of Israel, all of Israel no exceptions, was all in the same place at the same time. Yes, they were. This, 
when this time here, when this took place, when the Father was speaking these words here mm -hmm. and said this, we were in the wilderness and we had just been released out of bondage, mm -hmm. out of Israel. Mm -hmm. And we were in the wilderness and the Father then officially chose Israel as a people to be his people and we had officially chose the Father to be our mighty one, as you might say, our God. Mm -hmm. The agreement had been made via what we call the Mosaic Covenant. Okay, very good. The Father had established this Mosaic Covenant as an agreement between us to be his people and he to be our God. So in making this or establishing this Mosaic Covenant, which are the laws and the rules that we to be governed by if we're going to be his people, mm -hmm. the Father said, this is what I give you. This covenant, this is the covenant that we make. Mm -hmm. If you obey my covenant, you will be greatly blessed. That begins the 28th chapter, what we're reading, verses 1 through 15 or 16. If we obeyed his word, this agreement, this Mosaic covenant, right. these, those will be the blessings that we as a nation would receive. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. However, mm -hmm. on, the flip side, on the flip side, if we did not obey the Father, okay. if we did not obey him, and in retrospect, we know that we did not, or we know that Israel did not obey him. No, they didn't. Verses 16 through 68, which goes to the end of this chapter, right. would represent the bad things, the, 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 the things that will befall Israel if they were not to obey his word. Curses and punishments. These are the curses that will fall on Israel mm -hmm. if they failed to do Yah's bidding. Very good. Well so we are right now in verse we started beginning with a 36 elder, mm -hmm. so that means we are reading in what? In the curses. You're correct. And like I can say, in retrospect, we know that what? That we did fall. So these curses befell Israel. And yep. we, we just so happen to be beginning with 36, and it's talking about, and the subject matter here is about choosing a king, mm -hmm. us choosing a king over ourselves. Yes. Very good. Because obviously... That happened, and we know that it happened because that's the way it is today. And we see in history, we know that it took place then. So Elder is about to go to uh, another uh, uh, yeah. uh, verse uh, here. 1 Samuel, mm -hmm. chapter 8, verse 1. Okay. It says, Now it came to pass when Samuel was old mm -hmm. that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now, Israel up until this point had a series of judges. Okay. Samuel was the prophet at that particular time. All right. Mm -hmm. So notice what it says here. Then it says, the name of the firstborn was Yoel, mm -hmm. and the name of the second one was Abiah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were judges in Beersheba. Mm -hmm. But his sons did not walk. Mm -hmm. In his ways, they turned aside after dishonor, dishonest gains, took bribes, and perverted justice. Now, that's, that's some of the things that happen today. Right. I mean, uh -huh. Uh -huh. judges take bribes, filthy you know, filthy lucre. Yes, sir. You know, those who are over us okay. have, instead of administering justice properly, they uh -huh. got a price. They, that's right. They slant justice. Yes, they do. That's what it means to take a bribe. Okay. Mm -hmm. The guilty get away mm -hmm. while the innocent have to pay mm -hmm. because they don't have the bribe to pay. Okay. That's right. That's the bottom line. Yep. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Rumah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Mm. Stop. Here we are. We have been taken care of by the Father mm -hmm. all this time up until this point. 
And the very first thing we asked him, even though they might have been justified, if right. you think about it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people that were over them were mm -hmm. perverted. They weren't doing things the way that things should have been done. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they asked for a king like all the other nations around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that was the biggest mistake that we've ever made? Mm -hmm. The big no-no. Huh? <laughs> Let's continue to read. It says, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to Yahweh, and Yahweh said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. Ouch. Or oh, rejected Yah. Huh? Ouch. Ouch. We rejected the Father. Yes, we did. By asking for a king like all the other nations Hurt around feelings. us. Now, the father has feelings. Well, yeah, it does. <laughs> you are a reflection of that feeling. You have feelings. If somebody hurt your feelings, you're disappointed. Right. right. But notice what the father said. He said, heed all that they say. Right. Mm -hmm. Give them what they ask for. Mm -hmm. And then it says, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I have brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods. Remember what I read in Deuteronomy 36? Uh -huh. Yeah. When it talked about us serving other gods, right. even Twin. wood and stone. Right. Remember the Father just called this back to the memory mm -hmm. right. uh, and said right. They have forsaken me from the time that I brought them out. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember the golden calves? Yeah. <laughs> that yep. were made? Mm -hmm. uh, you remember all the things that we've done? See, remember, he's always called us what? Stiff neck and rebellious. Yep. A people that period. walk in a way that's not good. That's, that's what we are. And we continue that even today. Yes, yes we do. See, this is the point. This is today that right. we're talking about. Here. Right. You today brought it all the way back to today. Right. Okay. Because here we are. We're in a land mm -hmm. that's not our own. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. We have nothing. We own nothing. Right. We have no way of getting anything. Everything right. that we put our hand to right. seem to vanish in the wind. Uh -huh. yep. But that's because of, go back to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Right, right. Huh? That, prom that promise yeah. came to pass. Huh? And let's read this last verse, Deuteronomy 28, 68. Uh -huh. It says, and Yahweh will take you back to Egypt in ships by a way of which I said you shall never see it again and there you will you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves but no one will buy you uh, that has come to pass we know that yeah uh, I'm not reading this to incite you right or even to excite you. Okay. But for you to open your eyes and to look and to see who you really are. Right, right. And what you really about. You right. really are a proud people, are honorable people. Yeah. Right. When yeah. you're right with the Father. Mm -hmm. And you have a charge. Yeah, we right. do. And that charge is for you to be the example to the rest of the world. Right. And when I say example, that means to live the way that the Father prescribed you to live. Right. Elder spoke about the blessings and the curses. Right. We've only experienced what? The curses. Right. Absolutely. Right. Huh? That's From right. 16 to 68. That's right. But we want to experience 1 to 15. That's right. right. That's right. what we want to do, Elder. That's what we want to do. That's our goal. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. only way that we can do that is if we do what? 
Return to the Father. Exactly. Right. But see, a lot of people make the statement that Israel don't exist no more. Mm -hmm. Even today, Israel is done away with. It's up yeah. to the Christians. Those are the spiritual Israelites. And, and, and no, y'all, I was just thinking of that. When the elder just asked that question, mm -hmm. I thought to myself in my mind that the first thing that we have to do is we have to understand who we are. Very good. We have to understand our heritage, which is what you just said in other words. Mm -hmm. Right. And let me bring this thing from then back here today via scripture. And I'm going to start in uh, Amos. The third chapter in the first verse. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Yah speaking to the prophet. He said, Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. You just talked about that, Elder. Yeah. It said, You only have I known of oh. all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. So Israel was the only family that the father made himself known to. And he gave the charge to Israel to give his word to the world. Now, I want to bring it to today and show that Israel is not done away with. And that charge is yet got to be fulfilled. Very good. Go with me to um, Romans. To the, to the Pauline books. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. Follow Shaul. Yeah, Romans. Uh, where am I here? I want to go to Romans 11 and 1. I want to read a few of these verses. It says, this is Shaul talking. I say then, hath Elohim cast away his people? Hmm. Elohim forbid, for I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Elohim had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. I just read that in Amos, right? You mean to tell me that Shaul was an Israelite? Yes, he was. He was no, not a... No, he was he a was, Roman. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. Oh, okay. He says, Woe ye not what the scripture said of Elijah. He says, How he make intercession to Elohim against Israel saying, Master, they have killed thy prophets and dig down their altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of Elohim unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant According to the election of grace, yes. there's a remnant of Israel here, and part of them is sitting before you today, mm -hmm. bringing Yah's word. Israel is here. Now skip down to uh, verse 16. Verse 16, same chapter. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. So if Israel be first, and you come after Israel, if you cast off Israel, what about you? Yeah. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were it grafted in amongst them, with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Mm -hmm. He says, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, mm -hmm. that I might be grafted in. Mm -hmm. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, but not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. He's talking to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm talking to the Gentiles, the Christians of today. Don't boast against Israel. Israel's done away with. It. Ain't no more Israel. If the father done away with Israel, back in Amos said, you're the only one I've known. And we just read in Deuteronomy 28, the curses he said he would do to Israel, the first he chose, his firstborn, what would he do to you who comes after Israel? Correct. So Correct. Israel's not cast off. 
Israel's not done away with. There's a remnant. That's right. And part of that remnant sitting right here, giving this word. Again. So take heed. Again, to pick up on what Oyahu said, mm -hmm. turn to Jeremiah 31. Mm -hmm. This is something else that's misunderstood here. Just as Oyahu said, Israel has Israel is still here. Let's read this. Jeremiah 31, 31. Mm -hmm. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with who? The house of Israel and with the house of who? Yehuda or Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Mizram or Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Mm -hmm. Though I was a husband to them, says Yahweh, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel mm -hmm. after those days, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I will put my laws in their mind mm. and write them on their hearts and I will be their heir and they shall be my people. Mm. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no Yahweh, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh. For I will forgive the iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. Mm. Now turn to Hebrews 8. Yeah. It's the... See, because I have a question mm -hmm. that I like to ask all the time. And people seem to think that it's a joke when I say this. Okay. And I ask them, well, what covenant are you under? Okay. I want remember what over Yahoo read in the beginning? Mm hmm We're here at Hebrews 8. And I'm gonna start at verse 7. Mm -hmm. It says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Why? We read in 31, 31, he said the day was going to come when he would make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, mm -hmm. right? Okay. It says, because finding fault with them, he said, them meaning the people, not the covenant, not the but word. the people. Right. It says, behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, mm -hmm. when I will make a new covenant with who? the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. Stop. Mm -hmm. If you not, have not joined yourself to the house of Israel, mm -hmm. tell me what covenant you're under. Right. Because the only covenant that was ever made was only made with Israel. Very mm -hmm. good. So you're not under any covenant if you don't belong to Israel. That's true. Huh? Good. Well, that's that, that's the uh, the truth in in all this glory, Elder, because here in uh, in Revelations. Okay, glad you're going there. <laughs> yeah. And the. Second. In Revelations, I believe the twenty the twenty first verse. I'm I'm sorry, twenty first chapter. And the twelfth verse. Let me start the 11th verse. Having the glory of Yah, and her light was like a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, mm -hmm. and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. Mm -hmm. 
and at the gates twelve angels and names written on the gates which are the names of the twelve tribes of Israel, of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the kingdom in which you are trying to get to, you have to go through one of the gates. Right. You had three gates in the north, three gates in the south, three gates in the east, and three gates in the west. Mm -hmm. Which one of those gates are you going through if you get that far? So this hatred that you have for Israel, that's not the spirit of Yah. Not at all. See, if this whole thing is based upon spirit and what spirit you embrace regarding the Bible or the sacred writings, what you, what you, what you have to understand is what spirit are you under? What spirit motivates you? I mean, this hatred for Israel is a, is a hatred that Satan unleashed a long time ago. Yes, sir. And here it is, in this day and time, as far down the line as we, as we become, we're still perpetrating that same hatred for Israel. Most so-called African Americans don't understand that they are Israel, and they speak against themselves. Mm -hmm. They will actually uh, speak against a blessing that the Father set aside for them. Yep. As, a as opposed to a doctrine that has nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. So it's, com it's, it's really devastating to hear people talk about Yah, the spirit of Yah, but not possessing the spirit of Yah and not trying to get closer or trying to learn how to possess the spirit of Yah or learn who Yah is. See, first and foremost, in order for you to obtain salvation, and if you think that you're on that road, most of Israel does not even know the Father's name. Mm. In order for the Father to enlighten you or to bring you closer to him, you got to know his name. Mm -hmm. Because that's the key. Yeah. You have to know the Father's name. And if you know the Father's name, then you know the Son's name. Yes, because it has nothing to do with your, uh, with your interpretation or what you think that fits. Turn to Zephaniah. Yeah. Zephaniah. Yeah. Turn to Zephaniah. The, the third chapter. Okay. Everybody there? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It says, for then will I turn to the peoples a pure language, mm -hmm. that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. Right. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplicant, suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, as which thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee those who rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty in my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of the afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahweh. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed, lie down, and none shall make them afraid. <clears throat> That's futuristic. That's, yeah. But up here, in 9, it said, For then will I turn to the peoples of pure language. Right. That's us and beyond. That they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. One name. One accord. One, consent. one accord. But right. back up to, to Zephaniah 1. And mm. we're going to read <laughs> verse 8. <laughs> 
It said, mm -hmm. and it shall be in the day of Yahweh's sacrifice. You know what that is? That's that, that's that great day that you y'all looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Or are you? Thank you. That man. I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel. Mm -hmm. That not only means what you wear outwardly, but what you wear inwardly. That spiritual apparel that you put on, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hanging all those idols around your neck. That's right. Huh? Mm -hmm. Or all those idols that's coming out your mouth. Prayer beads, cross. All of that has nothing to do with the Father that's or right. the Son. None whatsoever. Well, uh... That's absolutely true. I'd like to jump on something that uh, uh, Obiyahu uh, has stressed a couple of times mm -hmm. about how we, for some reason, uh, keep falling back to uh, Israel not being around anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Israel ceasing to exist and going right back to, again, <laughs> where you just left from in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Okay. Yeah. And we go back to 31, mm -hmm. and we pick up where you left off at. Right. We'll begin with uh, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Get Yahoo or Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verse 35. Mm -hmm. It says, thus says Yah, who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, mm -hmm. who disturbs the sea and its waves they roar. It says, Yah, Yahweh Sabo, or it says, Lord of hosts here, mm -hmm. but it says in the Hebrew or Hebrew that would be, that would be Yahweh Sabo, mm -hmm. is his name. It says, if, if those ordinances mm. refer to the sun and the moon okay. and the stars that Yah created, he says, if those ordinances from before me, Yah says, he says, then the sea of Israel shall also cease. So he's saying, if those ordinances here depart from before me, he says, mm -hmm. I missed that, depart, that's the key word there. Yes, sir. It says, if those ordinances, again, sun, moon, and stars mm -hmm. yeah. that he created, if those ordinances depart from me, he says, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Mm. Wow. Now. My only contention is, wow. since Yah has created these ordinances, mm -hmm. all the way back in Genesis, beginning in Genesis, the first chapter, right. Mm -hmm. right. to this day that we that we are sitting here at this table speaking, in 2004, mm -hmm. has these ordinances ever departed from the Father? Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. outside and look up. Has, ever, has anyone ever <laughs> been tough enough, big enough, and bad enough, and smart enough, intelligent enough, strong enough to make these ordinances disappear. Not so. No, from the Father's presence. No. no. Okay, if that be true then, if they have not departed, it says, then Israel as a nation still exists. Absolutely. That's right. Now, we may not be on the land because remember a nation does not refer to a what to a land mm -hmm. it refers to a people right. israel was a people who didn't have no land we were referred to as a nation then Sojourn. okay so we're not talking about no no land no ground no right. dirt we're talking about a people people yeah. when it says israel i mean israel shall cease from him or depart from him or disappear as being a nation he's talking about the people he ain't talking about the land, right. not a spirit neither. 
Exactly. So that tells me Israel ain't went nowhere. No, no, Israel no. is still here. And that's all I'm saying because I just wanted the, the audience to know, the view audience to know that what you were trying to tell them on Yahoo, mm -hmm. we still here. Absolutely. Yes, we are still here. Not done with so it. I just wanted to bring that out and, and that, that because that was stuck on my mind after you had read it. And I, and I, I wanted to say it. And then when I connected with Obiahu saying it, then I had to go there. Well, okay. let's even let's let's do it right. Turn, to, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Beautiful. And let's read, start reading that Deuteronomy twenty-eight sixty-four. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. It says, "Then Yahweh will scatter you among all people, uh -huh. from one end of the earth to the other." And there you shall serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. Uh -huh. And among those nations you shall find no rest, uh -huh. nor shall the soles of your foot have a resting place. Uh -huh. But there, Yahweh, will give you a trembling heart, uh -huh. failing eyes, and anguish of soul. Uh -huh. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. Mm -hmm. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. Wow. In the morning you shall say, oh, that it were evening. And at evening you shall say, oh, that it were morning. Because of the fear which terrifies your heart and because of the sight which your eyes see. Go out and look in your community Yep. and tell me that this don't fit you. Mm -hmm. you tell me that. You're absolutely right, Elder. That fit also during the time when we were first brought to this country and while we were brought to this country in the hull of ships and slave ships, right. when, we were, when we were slaves as well and when we had no assurance of our lives because we weren't sure of life. Right. We were sure. We were, we were sure there was death. Yeah. Because we were we were lynched. We were flogged. We were beat to death. We were beat to death if we were just found with a book. That's right. Yep. You see, especially all, this book. And, exactly. Yep. And all of these, that all of these verses that we're reading, are nothing but prophecies that the Father had laid out before us. And and and, and if you understand anything about prophecy. You know that prophecy comes two and threefold. Yeah. So yeah. all of these prophecies here were applicable to the various dispersions and captivities Absolutely. that befell us. It's yeah. not just one time. Sure, this happened yeah. before. This happened before we even came to America. Yes, it did. Yeah. But it happened all. But but this is also what America is also what slavery is. Yeah. Is inclusive of this as well. Yes, so it's something that happened over and over again. This hits on each and every captivity and dispersion. Right. And, and the uh, question would be why? Uh, exactly. Other than the one we had just left because we had just left Egypt. Right. Mm -hmm. So and, it's us. Yeah. And not and not only that. Again, as we speak about these things, these things are not to inflame you or to incite you. But it's to enlighten you, right? So that you'll take a look mm -hmm. and see who you really are. Not a gentile, huh? Exactly. So that you can pick up the mantle that our forefathers dropped. Yep. Absolutely. You got a job. That's right. You work for the father, whether you know it or not. And this is not a plaything. It's no. not. And, huh? I, and, and I like to like to add to what we're saying here. Why you see we we, 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 we you know the name of the show is is, is issues of Hebraic thought and Hebraic culture and New Testament. Mm -hmm. And we've been reading so much here in this and in what we call the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But the reason why, well, I want to make that connection just so you understand that we're still on point here. Mm -hmm. the whole issue and point and reason why we're reading this to you viewing audience is because we want you to try and 
try and get a, a, a better grip and a better understanding in who you are so that when we go over here and we go to, we pick up our, our, our Bibles and we read about uh, the Apostle Paul being this apostle to the Gentiles, I want you to understand he was not the apostle to you. Mm. He was apostle to other people. For we are on this side of the fence. Paul was not your representative. We think of us that most of the people that, that fill up the churches today believe that they were what? They, they believe that they're Gentiles. Gentiles. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Paul was not the apostle to you. He was the apostle to someone else. You are not Gentiles. But make it plain, Elder, when you're talking about, the people you're talking about is the so-called African-American. Right. African-American. Right. The Puerto Rican. Right. When we go to these churches and the leaders are standing before us and they're teaching us that we're Gentiles, he's in error. Yeah, he's in, he's error. in error. He doesn't know much about history. No, he doesn't. This is what we have to do. We have to get the people to know and understand that you know, this is a history book as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I've seen people try to take the Bible and divide it up and say, right. well, these are poetic books. These are historical books. You know what? Yeah, but guess what? The whole book is historical. Yes, it is. Because it happened already. That, just, that fact alone makes it history already. So it's our history. Mm -hmm. When the European went to Africa, went to the western coast of Africa and boarded us on, the, on those ships, in the hull of those ships. Those ships came to this side of the world. Someone uh, earlier was talking about western world. I don't know who it was. Were you elder or was it Obiyahu? Or was it you, Kazaki, or talking about the west, the western world. When, when they brought all of us across the water mm -hmm. to this side of the world, western world, those Gentiles, Europeans, stopped in South America, they yep. stopped in Central America, mm -hmm. they stopped in Puerto Rico, they, they, stop, they stopped in all the, in those areas as well as coming to America itself. Right. Mm -hmm. And they dropped off our forefathers. Right. And when they dropped them off, you know, one of the first things that they did when they dropped them off was separate us. Yep. You know, mothers and fathers were maybe left in, 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 in Central America somewhere, and daughters and, and fathers, or, or, or your sister, well, was dropped off in America. Right. Part was sold here, Northern America, part was sold in South America. Right. But we were still family. Right. That was us. That's all of us. Yes, we got relatives here, we got relatives in Central America, we got relatives in South America. Yes, we do. The Portuguese did it, the Spaniards did it, the English did it. They all did it. And this is important. That's our history. So when we, when we think of Paul, and I just want to be honest, when you think of Paul, don't think of Paul being the one standing in the gap for you. Hmm. But he was standing in the gap for others, not you, because you are on this side of the fence. Yeshua was the one talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, Yeshua was sent to you. And Paul was sent to them. That's what we're trying to get you to understand. That's our connection with this Old Testament to this New Testament thing. And right. understand that Hebraic principles, Hebraic culture, because that is your culture. That's right. And, you know, and, and it behooves you to, under, to understand it and learn about it and know what it's like. You just try to think about it, open your mind up a little more, just to try and, and you know, accept that, read it, you know, uh, do what you have to do to get it because, you know, you, 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 for so many years you've been thinking you're one thing. I'm African American. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm black. I'm, I'm a Negro. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm from Africa. Yeah, you are from Africa. You mm -hmm. hey, hey, for all intents and purposes, Gentiles, Europeans yeah. are from Africa. Yeah. Everybody is. <laughs> yeah. So the, so in a sense, they're just as much African as you are if you want to if you want to go that far. Africanians. Yeah. And not only that, what country? There's 55 countries in Africa. And what language did your forefather speak? Right. You don't know. You don't know. It's about 5,000 languages. And any person that knows anything about African-American, quote-unquote, history, you know what? You don't know either. Yeah. You think That's you're right. an expert? You tell me. Yeah. But we do know the origin 
of the so-called African and the African-American. Sure. We're talking about origin right here on this program. We're talking about the seed of Abraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov, or the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is who you were before you got to the west coast of Africa, or you got to South Africa, Ethiopia, North Africa, where we were driven. Okay. Before you got to and crossed the, the Sudan, and you got to the west coast of Africa, this is who you were. Absolutely. See, people uh, that's dealing with uh, Afrocentricity, so to speak, mm -hmm. they want to tell you that this is a white man's book. That's one of the biggest lies that's ever been told. It's your book. Simply because <laughs> this book is a translation. And this book is 90, at least 95% people of color. You. Okay? You. Me and other peoples of color. But it's mainly about the children of Israel. Okay? So when a person comes to you and tells you this is a white man's book, that's impossible. And it's, and it's, and it's strange how the father's word uh, refuses to be hidden. In the Middle Ages, the Bible, they used to have Bible burnings. They tried to eliminate the Father's Word. Mm -hmm. But the Father's Word is still here alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. And there is no white man on this planet that would write a book where he would make a black people closer to God than he is. Huh? That's impossible. That's not going to happen. Hmm. When we sit here on this stage, and we, and I know a lot of people say, why they got, like, where they get the audacity to sit there and, 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 and put other people's beliefs down? It's not that we're putting other people's beliefs down. We're trying to bring people up to an understanding that this book is not, any, any, is not under any private interpretation. This book has a lineup with what the father prescribed in the first place. So when you see us sitting up here talking, this is something we've been commissioned to do because we understand who we are and we take it as far back as it goes. And we understand the covenant that Yah has, the covenant, the, the agreement that Yah has, the contract that Yah has with his people. And once you understand it, we came to the knowledge of knowing who we are that's where we get the authority from, from Yah himself. This is not a self-authoritative uh, thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. The Most High made a covenant with his people. Once you understand that you are part of that covenant, then you'll know exactly what you are to do, mm -hmm. as well as what not to do. Yeah. So we're telling, telling you, viewing audience, that we uh, understand that there's been a lot of uh, distortion and uh, extensive amount, extensive amount, and a lot of uh, miseducation regarding this book. Okay, and I just pose a question: If if you don't know, if you think you're a Gentile, but if you don't really know who you are, and if you don't believe that you're the children of Israel, who are you? That's the question that I pose. Right. Search it out. Right. Who are you? Right, right, right. And if you think it's not important, go to Zephaniah. Let's go to Zephaniah. Okay. Go to Zephaniah. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go to Zechariah. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Zechariah, the eighth chapter. Zechariah 8 and 20. 
Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, it, sh it shall yet come to pass that there shall come peoples and inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh of hosts and Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is uh, Israelite, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that Yahweh is with you. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to know who you are. Right. Because Yahweh is with you. Right. right. And as Zephaniah, I'm sorry, Shaka. as Zechariah says, uh -huh. Peoples of all nations will know that Yah is with you. That's right. Because if Yah had not been with you all this time and all the attempts at genocide and totally trying to just wipe you out, right. it, would have, it would have succeeded a long time ago. Long time right. ago. If you look back at our history as a people Tell it. and you see how far the Father has brought us mm -hmm. as so-called African Americans, That's right. a nameless invisible people, mm -hmm. so to speak. We're still here. Right. At one point in time, we weren't even allowed to read and write. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some, somehow, we've succeeded. We've learned how to stay alive and how to keep producing, mm -hmm. how to bring new children mm -hmm. into the world. Mm -hmm. But these children ought to be taught the right way. Mm -hmm. You can't keep them in a, a, a state of denial or in a state of ignorance because we choose to be there. Because these are the Father's people also. So once you understand how important you are, you would never allow another individual to tell you that you're simply a Gentile, Absolutely. that you were simply grafted in, right. that you were simply uh, an adopted son, so That's to speak. Right. Right. You are Yah's first son. Right. You are Israel mm -hmm. or Israel. So once you understand uh, that you are basically lo uh, royalty on the face of the planet, then you understand your role. And you won't take this book lightly and you won't let anybody just come and just tell you anything about this book. Right. You will embrace it and you know it for it to be yours and you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing.